This is the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. I'm Liz. And I'm Ashley. Together, we have been making money online collectively for over 10 years. Our mission is to help you start, learn, and grow a reselling business and to inspire you to turn your paycheck into a daycheck. The world is changing and we want to help you change with it. Welcome back to another episode of the Paycheck to Daycheck Reselling Podcast. This episode is going to be all about tips on getting free inventory. When you first start reselling, one of the biggest things is to have a budget. It does cost money to buy goods to resell. So the best thing if you don't have a very big budget is to look around at different places and hopefully you can find items for free. Yeah. So we compiled a list of things that you might not have thought of. You know, I think in one of our first episodes, we talked about where to find inventory in general. And one of the first things that we recommended was to look around your own house or your family members, you know, ask them for things. But this is going to be like a much more specific, detailed list, things you might not have thought of, um, things you might want to try, add these things to your toolbox and see if they work for you. So right off the bat, uh, we are going to start out with Facebook Marketplace. And this might seem like really obvious, but we do have a couple little tips that go along with that. So within Facebook Marketplace, I'm, I'm not sure if it's as easy to set this up on a mobile. I've, I think I've only done it on the desktop mm-hmm. version, but you can set up alerts and notifications with certain keywords. So mm-hmm. if you're looking for free stuff, you can type in free stuff and set that up as a notification. So if someone lists just like a bunch of free items and they label it free stuff, that's going to send you a notification. Same thing with like curb alert, the free pile at the road, like you can think of different terms and different keywords that you might want to set up alerts for. And then that way you can be one of the first ones to see the post and hopefully one of the first ones to get to the good stuff. I do know they have it on mobile because I know I've looked, like I usually use mobile when I'm looking on Facebook marketplace. Like if, you know, Casey and I go to lunch, I'll look for stuff in the area, see if there's something by us. And I know you can do it on mobile. Gosh, and that's, that's perfect then. All right. The next place to look definitely for free inventory would be OfferUp, which is going to be very similar to Facebook Marketplace. And you might think, well, why do I need to check both? But there are some people that only do Facebook Marketplace and there's people that only do OfferUp. Mm-hmm. And OfferUp, still the same thing. You can search by free items, maybe free, whatever you're looking for, whatever you're selling. So maybe you sell a lot of clothing. You could look and and search free clothing or free golf clubs, something like that to where you're being a little bit more specific, but definitely using those keywords, free search by price. You can search, you know, for really low priced items. I know I've looked before and a lot of people will put free stuff as a dollar Mm-hmm. So if they, if you search by, you know, lowest price, then you might come up with, you know, maybe a post where somebody has a bunch of free storage bins and they're trying to get rid of them. They're not, maybe they don't put free. Maybe they just put a dollar, just put a dollar. Have you seen that before? Yeah, definitely. A lot of times on Facebook marketplace too, or they'll label it like one, two, three, four, you know, just some oddball number. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. The next kind of app that we have here for you guys. It's called the free stuff alerts app. And I found out about this. I forget what Facebook group it was in. It's a reselling Facebook group, but someone mentioned that they got like, it was like this crazy um, wicker, like um, it was a like a wicker shelf and with like the boho community right now, like it's super popular. They're spray painting them and they're using them as like plant stands. But anyways, they resell for like a ton of money for like, four or $500. And some, someone was giving theirs away for free. So they snagged that and then like cleaned it up and resold it. But anyways, I had never heard of the free stuff alerts app. So I downloaded it. It works very similarly to Facebook marketplace and offer up. I, I think it grabs posts from different sources and then combines them kind of like um, the yard sale app used to do with Craigslist. You know, I really wish they still did that, but it pulls different free posts from different sources and compiles it all onto that app. So again, you can set up alerts, keyword alerts and notifications on that app and it comes, you know, right to your phone. 
The next up, which I know is a really, really good one, especially out here, day after garage sales. When Casey and I were going to full-time RV, we had to sell literally everything. So it was a pretty much a moving sale or get rid of everything sale. And I can remember the last day of the sale, I was starting to tell people just take anything because mm -hmm. we were in a time crunch. We had to hit the road to be in San Diego, I think two days later. And I mm -hmm. had still a bunch of stuff outside and it got to the point where people were coming to the garage sale and this was the tail end. And I just said, take it all, whatever you want, whatever you see. And people were like, really? And I'm like, yes, I can't bring it with, we had the RV in the driveway. I'm like, this is what we're gonna live in. I have no room for this stuff. And what's nice about that is a lot of people that do garage sales, garage selling is a lot of work, putting a garage sale together. You have to organize all the inventory, put it on tables or however you're gonna organize it, put it out and they can be longer days. So by the last day, you are ready just to get rid of that stuff. So if you look at garage sales and maybe go at the tail end of it or even message those people too, I know people do that. You know, you know that somebody has done a garage sale, message them, do you have any product left over that you need removed? Because people will say, yes, come and get it. And that was actually a post that I had to do was after the garage sale, even telling people to take whatever they wanted, I had to put another post out saying free stuff, come and get it. All right. So the next one that we have for you guys is a little controversial, but we're going to talk about it anyways. And that would be dumpster diving. If you're thinking about doing this, you should definitely check out the different laws in your town or in your state. They could vary from town to town. Um, there are some dumpster diving like Facebook pages out there, different communities and from what I hear, it's like a pretty cool community. Like they just let you know, like, hey, this store out back, this dumpster has this stuff. This dumpster has this stuff. If you're looking for, you know, uh, makeup, this is the one you go to, whatever the, the case might be. Um, I do have a little side note story about this. So when I was in college, I worked for this uh, gym in Buffalo, New York. And I opened the gym every morning. So I had to be there at like 4.30 in the morning, crazy early. And it was connected to one of the strip malls out there. On our breaks, like, you know, our lunch break, which was like technically breakfast time, we'd walk down like the back parking lot and there was a Wegmans grocery store, not too, too far away. So we'd walk to Wegmans and then grab like a bagel or something and then walk back. And along the back of the parking lot, that's like the back of all the stores and all the dumpsters were back there. We get back one morning from our, you know, breakfast journey and we see some of the other employees out by our dumpster and we were right next to Michael's and our dumpsters were right next to each other. We get up to our, you know, coworkers and we see they're looking in the Michael's dumpster and they're pulling stuff out. One of the managers is like backing her SUV up to the dumpster. Like what is going on? They, there were hundreds of candles of brand new picture frames. There's one of those cricket machines in there. Um, the different like uh, what are they like cartridges for that different like printer things associated with that. I mean, we pulled out so much stuff, scrapbooking stuff, journals, notebooks. It was wild. So I actually was going to school at the time to, um, for photography and sculpture. There was stuff in there that I could use for my classes, which was really cool. We emptied that dumpster <laughs> and took pretty much everything out of there. It was like they showed up that morning and just like dumped half the store in this dumpster. It was crazy. So that was my one and only dumpster diving experience. I won't say that I wouldn't do it again if the opportunity presented itself, but um, that was that was a pretty good one. We got a lot of really good stuff out of that one. The other day we went to our warehouse. We had to put a shipment together. And I was going to, in the back, get in the truck and start it because it's still warm here. So I wanted to cool it down. And I look at the two dumpsters and who do I see looking in the dumpster? Casey. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you looking at? He's, he's like picking up boxes in there. He's like, oh, I'm just trying to see what's in here. Now, granted, it that dumpster does belong to the people who we rent the warehouse from. But we know that they throw stuff away. They always throw away pallets, things like that. You can 
look in dumpsters, especially if it's on property that you know, like even if you live in an apartment complex and you're going by a dumpster, a lot of people will put stuff outside of the dumpster that's actually decent instead of putting it in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. so those are always really good opportunities. I posted the picture of Casey dumpster diving on Twitter and somebody responded with, well, actually a lot of people responded that they do that, but someone had said they would go to a dumpster behind a Staples or Office Max and they would always throw out old ink, like those big ink cartridges or like the smaller one. Well, they're bigger than like a normal at-home printer. And I asked them, why do you think they do that? But a lot of stores, their inventory either expires or it gets down to where it's like a penny inventory to where mm -hmm. it's not worth anything. And they don't know, they don't have places to put it. So naturally they're just going to throw it away. Unfortunately, you know, that's just a waste, but that is reality. Yep. So I would say definitely look at the dumpster. They'll have like a little sign with like their laws. But if you find a store throwing stuff away, go in and talk to the manager. I'm a reseller or I collect things. When do you throw things out? And would it be okay if I come by and get that inventory? Some places it is illegal and you're not allowed to do it. So just look into the laws and especially on the private property. I mean, they have different rules than, you know, maybe a city dumpster. Yeah, absolutely. So the next thing that we have for you guys is the local buy nothing Facebook pages. So the whole buy nothing movement is something separate from like just Facebook marketplace. You, your area might have its own buy nothing page. So for instance, you know, Buffalo, New York, buy nothing, Rochester, New York, buy nothing, whatever. So search your local area and then buy nothing on Facebook and see if something comes up. Each buy nothing group is going to have their own rules within the group. Some are a little bit more strict. Some are a little bit more lenient, but it's a really cool community to be a part of if you have one in your local area. And if you don't, then maybe you should start up a page for your area. That could be really beneficial for you as a reseller. Our local Buy Nothing page is really generous. They're very giving and it's a really great community to be a part of. I actually got some plants for the new house, um, like outdoor, you know, like perennials. Um, this lady had some that she had dug up and she was just giving them away. So, you know, not to resell, but for the actual house. Um, but they post things all the time. And in turn, you know, I want to be a, a good member of that group. So I post things in there as well, stuff that I'm not moving anymore, whatever the case might be, whatever we come across that we want to get get out of the house. So you never know what people are looking for. Um, just, you know, be a good member. Don't just take, 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 make sure you're giving something back as well. Yeah. And sometimes people want to get rid of stuff, but they don't have enough to actually have like a garage sale. Mm -hmm. So people might be like, you're saying, getting rid of some older inventory, which you don't want to throw away stuff. And some people don't want to always donate. Like they don't want to always donate to Goodwill. They just want to give it to somebody who they know will use it for free rather than donate it to a Goodwill or a thrift store. Exactly. All right. The next one, which I have the joy of being a member of two different next door groups, but next door, if you're unfamiliar is a neighborhood app. When you move to an area, you can download it. You can set your neighborhood and then you connect with the neighbors around you. Now, I think originally it was for more like to communicate with neighbors. My next door app is filled with a bunch of retirees that I think the only thing they like to do is be on next door and they're, they've turned it more into like a Facebook complaining post app yeah. <laughs> versus Our what it's supposed to be. Our community, it's so funny. I'll have to see if I can get some screenshots and I'll post them on Instagram. But I swear, at least once a day, there's a post on there. Is this a coyote or is this a fox? Is this a wolf? Is this a fox? It's a dog. It's it's your next neighbor's dog. Like, help me identify this animal. And you wouldn't believe the people who are like convinced, like, oh my God, that's a bear. Like, it's not a bear. It's not a bear. It's a dog. I'm on next door because I want to know what's going on in the community, but getting back to the podcast next door, people will post on there. I'm getting rid of things. And actually in our area, it's a good app to have since we do have a lot of retirees in this area, 
there was a gentleman who had just lost his wife and she had a bunch of clothes and he didn't want to donate them. So he wanted them to go to a good home. So he reached out on there and, you know, if anybody knew of maybe a shelter or anyone who needs clothes, that's maybe less fortunate and, you know, needs those items. So in that sense, next door is really good because you're connecting also with people in your neighborhood, which means when they post something, you're not having to drive clear across town. Now with OfferUp and Facebook Marketplace for Casey and I, I swear every single item that we need is on the opposite side of where we live. We live on the east side of Phoenix. It's always on the west side of Phoenix for some strange reason. And when my mother-in-law was visiting Bolo Brenda, she was looking on Facebook Marketplace and she knew we needed things for the house because we were renovating. And she'd be like, oh, look, it's only in Glendale. And we're like, well, yeah, we might as well jump on a plane to get to Glendale. It's that far away. We don't want to drive 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, exactly. And I know that at the beginning of the pandemic, people were talking about like posting in search of posts on Nextdoor specifically and some on Facebook. So for your local community, you know, there were post ideas going around asking for donations if you were like running a low on inventory. So that's also another, you know, idea you can use these apps and tools to make your own posts. Like maybe you're looking for books or electronics or games or something of that nature. And, you know, I would definitely make sure you're upfront and honest with people. You know, you're not looking for them for your kids or whatever. You're you're clearly looking for them to resell them, but you can word it in a way that's like, you know, I would be using this for my business and whatever. So just make sure you're transparent and what you're going to use them for. Otherwise, there will definitely come a time where you get called out and then your neighbors are going to end up mad at you. And you definitely don't want that. You don't want the bad blood in the neighborhood. Right. (laughs) The next thing that we have for you guys is something that I started doing when I moved out to the area that I'm in now. We have a lot of different universities and colleges in this area. And it's a pretty, we're near a pretty wealthy area. Um, So when you live near a college town or big universities, something like that, when the kids leave for the semester or when they leave for the summer, you're definitely going to want to drive through like that, you know, the dorm areas, like the off-campus dorms, the little, you know, condos that they have, the little apartments, definitely drive through there. We have a lot of kids that come here for school um, from different countries as well. And they leave everything. They literally just leave everything because they can't, they can't take it back home with them. As a matter of fact, when um, my boyfriend, Brian and I were in the car business, we dealt with this a lot because we were, you know, in the same area, kids would come and they would lease a car, you know, for the semester or the year or whatever. And then they would just abandon it in like a parking lot. Like it happened more times than I can count. They just would leave it. Be on the lookout around college campuses and, you know, those off-campus storms as well. You're going to want to drive through there at the end of the semester and at the end of the school year. For me, I don't live around the college town. I live around retirees. So probably the same thing can be said where we have a lot of snowbirds that live out here. And a snowbird is somebody that comes down to Arizona for the winter a lot of Canadians, not so much when COVID was happening, but now like they're coming down a lot more. And I anticipate this is going to be a very busy snowbird season down here. And I think when they go back, the same thing applies. Sometimes they come down here and they'll just rent a place for four months. So maybe for us, a good thing to do would be to maybe put a post out, especially on the next door app, put one out that we can come and get your stuff. Mm -hmm. or drive around to like the 55 and older areas or connect with like a RV park that has 55 and older and connect with them and say, we, we will come and take things if people are leaving for the winter or leaving for the summer and they can't bring stuff with them and they're not going to be coming back and things like that. So I've never thought of it, but now that you mentioned the whole college thing, that made me, my wheels turn about the retirees out here. Yeah. That actually prompted another idea for me also. So my parents used to clean out whole estates and the families would pay them to clean it out, but they would have to take out everything. They were getting paid to do it. Plus 
they could keep whatever they wanted for the most part. So that might be some, if you have the ability, the space, the manpower to be able to do something like that, cleaning out whole houses and estates could be something, you know, useful for you guys and a great way to get some good inventory. You're obviously going to get some trash also, but it might be worth it. It depends on what area you live in, I, I suppose. All right. Next one, which is the last one we're going to cover on getting free items out here. We call it a uh, bulk trash day. So it's days where the city will allow you to put items on the curb, larger items. They come by, sometimes they come with like a mini little bulldozer thing. They scoop them up and put them in the dump or the garbage truck. And that's actually a really good time to look for items. You can usually find furniture. A lot of people put out broken furniture because they're too lazy to move it somewhere else or sell it or bring it to a thrift store or donation center. So those are really good times. I know a lot of people look for the posts on neighborhoods. So like if somebody has a neighborhood page and out here, there's huge neighborhoods. There's one south of us called Eastmark and it's like a huge up and coming area. They've got schools, they've got restaurants, things like that. So if you're on those Facebook pages and they will always post bulk trash day coming up, and then you can literally drive around and look through people's trash, which, like I said, some people throw out stuff where you're like, why did you throw that out? Like, what was wrong with it? But you have to remember, some people just like to declutter, move it out to the curb and not have to worry about it or deal with it. Yeah. And I find a lot on those big trash days. You know, what was it? The bulk item days? Bulk trash is what we call it out here. Bulk trash. Yeah. I think it's something similar around here. But what I found is that when people are going to throw out those big items, they tend to throw out a lot of other stuff too, because they get into that zone where like they're cleaning stuff out, they're organizing, they're going through their stuff. And then a bunch of stuff ends up down by the road, you know? So, um, if you're deterred by the large items, you know, don't think that might be all that you find. There could be some, some little gems in there too. And another thing that people always put out are usually uh, like wood and things like that. So maybe they built something in the backyard and they bought a bunch of lumber and they have leftover. That's where you can find that stuff. And if you can go around and accumulate lumber is really expensive. It's the prices have definitely come down. I only know because Casey built an extended patio in our backyard and we had, we didn't build it at first because the lumber prices were so high. And when you're doing projects like that, you tend to buy more than what you need just because Mm -hmm. you don't want to have to go back to Home Depot or Lowe's look for items like that, that, people use for home renovation product projects that they have a surplus of and they put out on the curb. All right, guys, that's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Paycheck to Paycheck Reselling Podcast. Anything we mentioned in this episode will be linked down below in the show notes or description down below. Be sure to share this episode with anyone you think it will help and follow us on social media at P2D Podcast. Thanks again for listening. Keep working towards that day check. <laughs>